like zero degrees. I'm out the cage, gotta let out the beast. Revolutionary guy, let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the hood, out the hood, out the hood. Wake up, get out the sheets. We came for one man, forget my peace. All right, Miami, time now for the middleweights. About scheduled for three three minute rounds. This Bay Area bad boy has knocked out opponents in two of his last three glory appearances. Here is Matt Baker. Galaz, here's our tale of the tape. Galaz 34, Baker 28. But look at the size, six foot six, 187 pounds for the American who will also enjoy an eight inch reach advantage. Professional experience edge, more than double for Ivan Galaz. I mean, the power, as I mentioned, a lot of it is coming from Matt Baker with that 52% KO ratio. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this middleweight matchup scheduled for three three-minute rounds and introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. He is a North American and world amateur champion. His record stands at 23 wins, seven losses, one no contest, 12 of those wins coming by way of knockout. At six feet, six inches tall, 1.98 meters, he weighed in at fight time at an even 187 pounds, 84.8 kilograms. He's here tonight, fighting out of the Bay Area of California. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Matt the Butcher Baker. His opponent fighting out of the white corner, a world kickboxing champion who made his debut in New York at Glory 48. His professional record impressive. 58 career wins with nine losses, one bout scored even, and 15 career knockouts. At six feet, one inch tall, 1.85 meters, he weighed in at 186.6 pounds, 84.6 kilograms. He's here tonight, fighting out of Santiago, Chile. Please welcome Ivan El Terrible Gala. And your referee in charge of this contest is Alan Abeli. Fighters. You already got the instructions, obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch them up again, go ahead, come out, fight. Rich, ready. Chris, ready. Daniel, ready. Matt Baker says he's never looking for the knockout, but says tonight, if it's there, I will fight. take it. Galas from Chile wearing the white gloves, Matt Baker in the black. Yeah, right away you see that height difference and asking Galaz about it, he says, that's no problem. I'm used to fighting taller guys. So he's going to really try to attack the body, use his low kicks. Where Matt Baker's Stop. probably going to use some of his knees. Galaz picked up his first glory win at Madison Square Garden, said that was the highlight of his career. Of sports and entertainment, Madison Square Junk Garden. Whoa! Ivan Galas just stunning Matt Baker, who doesn't know what hit him. Where did that come from? Let's see if Galas has got that finishing prowess, looking for his 16th professional KO. Yeah, just explosive, just trying to get on the inside. And when you get on the inside, you got to work. Fight your way in. When you're there, you got to go. Baker seems to have recovered fairly well, although Galaz not really pressing him hard. No, Galaz using his movement, trying to circle around. Try to explode his way in. He's got to stay all the way out or all the way in. Would you have been more aggressive after that knockdown? Well, I mean, it's still early in the fight, and Galaz in his last fight kind of gassed out against Joe Taylor. So there he's using his experience, not getting over crazy, emptying the tank. Stay patient. It's actually a veteran move. Well, I'm sure Baker doesn't mind it at all that Galaz is choosing to stay on the outside. And Galaz is getting tricky with those uppercuts and angle changes of the punches. Stunning knockdown early in the first round for Galaz. Galaz even switching stances a bit. Sometimes Galaz's jab is more like a paw, almost a feint. Yeah, he's trying to set stuff up like that overhand right. 
not throw everything with power. Is the more experienced you get, you don't throw everything with power. You set things up a little bit more. I like that Baker's trying to use his low kicks. This round has certainly belonged to Galaz. Baker trying to close the ring, use the ring control. Baker with an eight inch reach advantage. She'd like to keep Galaz as far away as possible. Yeah, maybe Baker mixing the jab trying to keep Galaz off. There you go, the UFC welterweight champ, Kamara Usman in the house. I know he's a big kickboxing fan and even does commentary work too. So I gotta make sure I go over there and say hi to him. He should come say hi to you, Dan Cummins. That's right. You're the legend here. There's a good round with Galaz, that spinning back fist. You know, throwing those unpredictable strikes, spectacular offense sometimes pays off. That was just right on the button, perfectly timed right from the outside. Definitely Baker wasn't expecting that, especially early on, but perfectly placed, perfectly spun, hit with the perfect part of the glove. And again, that feint threw Baker off. Yep. Watch his vision, he never saw it coming. And Galaz is always trying to change angles in his footwork. His hands are moving. You never know what angle the punches are coming at. He got rewarded with that beautiful Fight. knockdown. Well, Baker now knows what he has to do, win both of the next two rounds. Yep. Already now, Baker with the jab. I mean, he's got to throw something to keep Galaz from coming in. If he just keeps that high guard, it's easy for Galaz to work his way in. Yep. One of the judges scored that 10-9, Joe. Explain how that's possible. I have no clue how that's possible. With the knockdown, it should be a 10-8. Unless one of the judges viewed that Baker won the round, that despite the that only knockdown. explanation. And that's a pretty weak excuse. Yeah. I don't see how he did. Defending either way, it. either way, Baker's got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Galaz using his low kicks, which he's really known for, but it looks like when Baker lands his low kicks, they're doing most of the damage. So Baker's got to start putting in that punch to kick combination work. Well, as you said, Galaz has a tendency to slow down in the later rounds. Yep. And what Baker has is a sneaky uppercut, and he just threw it there. So I expect him to kind of throw that a little bit more in this round. Let's see how Baker handles adversity. He's off to a pretty strong start here in round two. What I like what Galaz is doing, he fakes an overhand right and throws the low kick. He's done that a few times in the first round and just did it now in the second. See, he throws the low kick, you'll probably see it again. Fakes the overhand right, drops the right low kick. He's putting a lot into those right hands as well, Joe. Every punch thrown with ferocity. I think Baker's starting to pick up. And every time Stop. Baker lands his kicks, you can see the damage it's doing. Well, somehow Baker can come back and win rounds two and three on the judges' scorecard. We'll go to an extra round if need be. Yep, there's that uppercut from Baker again. Also makes in his high kicks. And now check Galaz's low kick. Baker now starting to feel a little bit more comfortable in the second round. Ooh, good knee on the inside. Baker's got to capitalize when Galaz crashes that distance. Knees, uppercuts are all good weapons. Five-inch height advantage, eight-inch reach advantage for Baker, but it's Galaz who has the lone knockdown. Good movement so far from Galaz. Baker trying to continually cut the ring off. This is ring control. Close round, Baker certainly needs to win it. Yeah, that was a close round. Well, ladies and gentlemen, two weeks from tonight, Glory returns to Europe and Germany for Glory 69 Dusseldorf.
Welterweight title on the line, Cedric Dumbe versus Myrtle Grunhardt, one of the most intense rivalries in all of glory. That will be preceded by a heavyweight grudge match between Muhammad Abdallah and Michael Smolik. Actually, I'm incorrect that Dumbe versus Grunhardt fight, that's happening in Lyon, which will be two weeks after this. This main event will be Marat Gregorian versus Tajani Bezdadi for the lightweight championship of the world. We'll soon see the judges' official scores from that second round, which will certainly affect the strategy of both of these fighters here in the third. That second round, ooh, that low kick hurt. You can see the bruising on Galaz's lead leg. All three giving it to Baker. That means if Baker can win this round, we'll go to a fourth. But Joe, those low kicks will pile up. And if it does go an extra round, advantage Baker. Yeah. Baker's kicks are, are scoring really well now. Those big, strong legs, every time they land, they do damage. And Joe, when you've got that kind of damage from low kicks on your leg, what's the best way to alleviate it? Well, you can either switch stances, keep moving, try to slip, but you see Galaz trying to block it. That's one way. Use the shin or move, switch stances. Or I guess just be aggressive and never let the other guy kick yeah, you. That's one way, stay in or out. But a good low kicker will still get that leg. Stop! Stop! Garaz and his low kicks are hurting him now. But he just did a good job at slipping that one. Here are the total strikes landed. Galaz, 10 more than Baker, who's thrown about 20 more than Galaz. Changing no kicks, but Bakers are doing more damage. Galaz doing well with the boxing. Baker doing better with the kicking. Galaz definitely faded in this third round. He's still coming forward, but he's eating a lot more than he did in those first two rounds. Galaz would love to turn this into a phone booth fight. Where he'd get away from that long reach and the long kicks of Baker. I think Baker complains about headbutts on the inside. Just gave the referee a little look. That's another good strategy for Glass. If you're going to eat a low kick, just keep blasting your punches. Nice right hand for Galaz. With 15 seconds left. If Galaz wins this round, he wins the fight. Whoa, Ooh. right hand just missed from Galaz. That could have been a game ender. Instead, it'll go to the judges' scorecards. Yeah. Will we see one more round? Find out when we return to the Glory Super Fight Series Miami. Let's take a look at our highlights from this three-rounder or possibly four-rounder, Joe. Yep, it was that early spinning back fist knockdown. Well, Ivan Galaz perfectly timed, but Matt Baker was able to recover and had a good second round and continued to come down, chop away in the legs of Galaz, mixing some good knees and uppercuts, but Galaz continued to come forward, and I'm curious to hear what the judges have as a decision. Here's Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Here are the totals. One of our judges scores at 29-28, Baker. The other two have it 28-28, even. This one a majority draw. 
but according to glory rules, we go one more round. Tim Hughes always gets the yeah. big pop, as we call it, and we will go one more round. How did one judge have it for Matt Baker? Yeah, I don't understand. I think it was that 10-9 just that's for sure. But I think this fight deserved an extra round. I mean, for Baker to come down and come back, and it deserves it. So let's go, gentlemen. No complaints from either guy. They realize it's three more minutes. It's a rock'em, sock'em, robot round. Here we go. Baker on the front foot early, but got caught with the right hand from Galaz. Yeah, and Baker's going right for those punch to low kicks, but Galaz is closing that distance. They're bringing heat in this extra round. Oh, an axe kick from Galaz. Pulling out the Andy Thug. Axe kick. Joe, those low kicks, when you've had about three or four minutes to stand around, does it do even more damage for your legs? Yeah, the blood could cool, but could give you a little break for them. So Galaz trying that spinning back fist. Baker back to the low kick. Baker has targeted the left leg of Galaz ad nauseum. And look at the damage done. Hey, Galaz has landed some good low kicks himself, but Bakers are definitely doing more of the damage. Stop. Stop. Galaz's leg looks like the wall of my three-year-old's room. A lot of black and pink marker everywhere. Yeah, Baker ripping the body now. Galaz staying in the pocket. That's where he's got to be. Feel it might come down to who's the busier fighter. Galaz, we talk about him running out of gas, Joe. He got filled up. Yeah, he said he, in his pre-fight interviews he had something special, and it had to have been some sort of spinning. He just exchanged left hooks. Baker just doing what he's done all fight. Galaz trying to pull out the spectacular. Yep, so Laz now pushing the pace a little bit more. Baker's pissed off with the headbutts. Well, like I always said, if you don't like what the other guy's doing to you, you can punch him in the face. There you go. Oh, Ooh. nice high kick. It caught Galaz coming in. But Galaz still marching forward. And Galaz ate a right hand coming in, too. That toughness of Galaz really starting to show. Just keeps pressing, keeps throwing those low kicks, too. The Chilean national champion bringing the fight to Baker. 30 seconds to go. The fight probably still hangs in the balance. the last bit of this fight. If someone can land that one big shot here with 10 seconds to go. Galaz, that connected. They want to leave that lasting impression in this round. Why? Well, do not envy the judges here. But fantastic stuff from Ivan Galaz and Matt the Butcher Baker. Yeah, phenomenal extra round. They just went after it. A lot of volume, good conditioning for big boys and middleweights. Both Great men fight. raising their fists up, believing they have got the job I'm done or gotten the job done. Joe, who would you have picked in that third or that fourth round, rather? Well, this is the issue. You had Galas pushing forward, trying to land more of the punches, but when Baker did land his shots, they did look a little bit more damaging. So it's very difficult to kind of see what the judges are looking at. And I respect both of these gentlemen, and I think the judges got to decide. Matt Baker, though, coming off of that loss that he really wanted to put a good performance on. He really wants to continue to climb the rankings. He's ranked at number 10. And Ivan Glass currently ranked number 7. I know both of these guys want to continue to climb the ranks and obviously get a potential shot at Alex Pereira. Hey, this is one of those fights I wouldn't mind seeing again. Yep, absolutely. I mean, I just love that Galaz was so aggressive against the bigger guy. and. Baker really stuck to those low kicks. 
mixed in those good uppercuts and just use that ring control, man. And I, like I said, those these judges have some work. I think both of these guys will be, you know, one of them is going to be upset with the decision no matter what. You almost wish he yeah. went into the draw because yeah. that's what they deserve. They absolutely deserve that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after that sudden victory round, all three of our ringside judges score the bout 10-9 for your winner, Matt Baker! Matt Baker with the win and Manscaped's close shave of the night. All three judges scoring it for the Butcher and look what it means to him, Joe, off the canvas in round one and into the victory column in round four. Yep, that just shows how strong and durable Matt Baker is. He stood there, took a lot of Galaz's punishment on the inside, but continued to stay true to those low kicks. And scoring isn't about how many shots you hit, it's about damage. And Matt Baker's low kicks did do a lot of damage. His kicks when they landed did, it, did the work as well. But kudos to Galaz staying in there fighting you know, a six foot six giant in Baker. Great fight, gentlemen. You know, Galaz feels dejected, headed backstage right now. But it's a good fight, a great fight, in fact. And who knows, maybe we'll see it again soon. But coming up next, it is our main event here on the Super Fight.